Hey, welcome to the Basics of Magic, basicsofmagic.com. This is actually the very first episode uh, that I'm doing, but you're probably looking at this if you're in the magic community saying, but you, the guy next to you, uh, I remember him. Yes, you should remember mm -hmm. Rudy Tanaka. And I will tell you that I think I've officially gotten it down in my head forever, Magicians Forum, magiciansforum.com. Wow. Okay. I didn't even have a glitch. <laughs> Remember when we were doing yeah. the show, awesome. I would I, I literally, Mike and all the other guests that we had, I never could get magiciansforum.com. But I woke up one day, it was tattooed on my arm, and now I just can't get magiciansforum.com out of my mind. Yeah, we you, annihil you annihilated my last name, but hey, we can work on that uh, next. So I don't hold it against wait, you. Wait, wait. <laughs> Tanoka? It's, it's Tin Oko. Tin Oko. Oh, Tin Oko. Tinoco. But hey, man, I've been called worse. Just don't call me. You, you, you know. Yeah, I, you know what? You have been called worse, and I did all that before I got on the <laughs> broadcast with you. Uh, Rudy Tinoco uh, from, of course, MagiciansForum.com. Hey, listen, let me just start off by saying that if you're watching this show, uh, you are probably interested in magic. And so why I started uh, BasicsOfMagic.com, which, by the way, when you go to the website, you're going to notice it says, Learn a Magic Tricks. All of my friends that are really good at grammar are like, dude, you messed up the site. I'm like, no, I'm an SEO. So by doing the tricks, I might get the plural and the regular learn a magic trick because learn a magic trick wasn't available. But, you know, uh, I started this because uh, a couple of reasons. And I'm going to explain this to you. And then we're going to bring Rudy on and talk a little bit about magic and basics and all this stuff. And loving the fact that the magiciansforum.com uh, is out there for people like you. So if you're interested in magic, this is the, the show and the site that I put together. Now, I put it together because I got a little tired of watching people online just do tricks and not actually be able to have a presentation. Or they were doing things and you'd watch them do something and you'd watch them with the what I call or we call the arthritis hand where they're doing a classic palm or anything that they happen to be doing. And you're, and you're thinking to yourself, is there any particular reason why these people are not doing magic right? And I do mm -hmm. believe, and I hate to sound like an old timer saying, well, I think that the old kids, they know, I don't, the young kids don't get it. Uh, it's just that, you know, when you look at books like this, or you look at books wow. like this, or even if you look mm -hmm. at this book, which I love, I love what it smells, this book from the 18 or 1900s, and you see these books, I just love these books, and I've got too many books, and you see these, you think about something that's more uh, than just doing a trick. I mean, you want to do just a trick, get a dog. But in regards to magic, the disciplines, the uh, all the different things. So I put together on Basics of Magic, it's an ongoing catalog of things like a palm, a card palming or classic palm or French drop or even some basic magic tricks. Again, some of this came out of the fact that we were dealing with the COVID. And, and with the COVID, you know, I wanted to make sure that people had things that they could do in their own home. Because, you know, if you can't reach and grab, I don't know what, I have nothing normal in my home here other than deck of cards. It, you know, if you can reach around and learn things while we're sitting here, uh, either in quarantined or just not going out as much, how awesome is that? And to also get the discipline. So in the site, there is the magic itself. There is the presentation. There is the sort of the uh, philosophies of all that. There's the performing. And then I've decided to put together in this catalog as well some of my other skills that I do. And if you don't know this, you can look at this about like um, spinning ropes and, and cracking whips. and Because you never know. You never know as a performer, and I claim to be a new vaudevillian, but you never know the things you can do with all these different tricks, and they're kind of fun to learn, and it is a discipline. Now, on the part where it is good for you in regards to dexterity, that's a given. But the other part about it is, is that magic, in my opinion, and I'm sure that my guest's opinion is, is that when I was younger, I, hard to believe, I was a little bit introvert. And so in doing that, in doing magic, it really helped me and I remember being in high school and being like the last person that would be picked on a team and becoming the most popular person because I was the magic man. And, you know, mm -hmm. I carried around tricks and I did it. And, you know, great way to meet chicks. 
or guys, whatever. <laughs> and the point is, is that, uh, you know, it, it gave me that, that stuff to do. In addition, I want you to know on the site, there is tutorials that you can do live zoom. I am billing this site as being probably one of the, O's, the only virtual magic shop. So you can click on the chat, say, Hey, Will. And then if you go into the shopping cart, you can click on a trick and say, look, show me cups and balls or show me sponge balls or haunted pack. And I'll literally show it to you in a, in an engaged aging situation because people go to magic shops because they love well they want to learn magic but they also do it because they love the fact that a magician goes here watch this pick a card and then when they show it to you say oh you want this trick well let me show you oh no 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 hold the card here's the mechanic script hold it like this and do this this is what we're missing with the youtubes and the internet is that we watch it and i gotta be honest with you because of my lack of education i'm a visual and so it is awesome to see some of this stuff online but it's even more awesome if someone like rudy or someone like me can go no no no, no. the count goes like this and do that and i just think it's part of the love of magic and then finally, it's the love of magic and the community that it creates. And with that being said, I'm going to launch into the part that I love the most, which is talking to magicians that have been doing it long enough to, that can tell me where they started, why they love it, and what they're doing now. So with that being said, uh, Rudy Tinoco, I think I said that right, of MagiciansForum.com, I feel like a new man. I cannot believe I just yeah. knocked all of that out in the same thing. Welcome to the show, my friend. Yeah. You nailed it. Thanks, brother. And I want to say that I really appreciate the vision that you have for this new site because I think all of us who kind of grew up being able to go to the local magic shop and Rick engage and with other magicians, we miss that. And I, I can remember the first time that I saw Twisting the Aces floored me at this oh. magic from Milpitas. And, and the gentleman was kind enough, of course, to tell me where to find it if I buy the video cassette. But once I made that purchase, he set, set aside time and showed me how to do it. And he goes, now there'll be some finer details, but I just want to show you this how to hold the cards I mean, it was it was incredible and of course that now in, in this age that we're in is slowly going away sure there's tutorials and and i get that so but i think this personal touch that you're trying to to create here is really I, i'm i like it i think we're kindred spirits that's why i created the magician's forum as a, as a safe place for people to come into where you're not going to get knocked for asking what might appear to some folks yes. as a stupid question. Biggie. Right? Yeah, it's a biggie. Isn't it? It's a biggie. It really is. You know, um, <clears throat> most people that kind of get into magic, well, that's, I don't want to make that sweeping generalization, but when people do get into magic and you start reading books like this or even mm -hmm. this, you look at it and you start going, do you see how much writing is on there? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. You have to have an enormous uh, comprehension, first of all, but to be able to take that and then go, okay, and but you know, if, if when people really get into magic and they learn it and they collect enough magic that their their family members go, we have no more room for this, okay, uh, then you know you're you're stuck, and when you get stuck and you get into this. Again, uh, this is beautiful stuff, and I remember this is literally the first book I had. That's why I have it. And I wound up finding it, and after so many years of not finding it, and just loving it and remembering it, I kept it in my, my jacket when I was doing Magic Light as a, as a young person. But, you know, again, when you go to someone that is a magician, and they're showing you, this is why I love the Magician's Forum, is number one, you said exactly what is, in my opinion, the... The, um, the, the, the excitement, the energy of magic, which is you can go in there and you can type in anything and say, you know, I know this is going to be really silly, and this is true for me, is I need you to show me what a biddle count is. Because, you know, mm. even as the most advanced magicians in the world, sometimes some of these moves, a Mexican turnover. I, I mean, what? Yeah. please... I, and they'll be like, wait, I'm sorry, you don't know that? I'm like, no, I don't know that, but I do specialize in doing this and that and that. But the fact that the magiciansforum.com, you can go there and you can ask these questions and be a part of something and get the answers you want to finalize the trick or do whatever you're going to do is awesome because that's what's not out there. Yeah, I really firmly agree with that. So I think you have your work cut out for you because yeah. once your site becomes popular, there's only one of you, so you know, I'm sure you're gonna have to get a, a team of folks can who can be the behind, behind the counter magician helping those who are interested in learning the art. So that's I don't, I don't think I, Rudy, I'm, I don't think Rudy knows why I'm having him on the show. Then 
<laughs> right. Don't tell him yet. Yeah. No, no, I do agree <laughs> with you on that. Um, but, you, you know, there will uh, – the, uh, the other harder part about what I'm trying to do is, is that – and I'm going to bring this story up, but the other part about this that's difficult is the fact that there are so many magic sites out there nowadays, and there's a lot of places that you can go to get free magic tricks. I just think that there's a little bit more hand-holding that magicians or people need in learning magic because going rogue and getting your own stuff and learning a trick is great if you have that discipline. And you know what? I'm not expecting to capture a huge amount of people, but I do want to be able to give them a starting point and and not hold anybody back to learn only a little or whatever, a lot. But I do believe that there is a little bit of mentoring that I, I think that uh, magic holds that other things don't. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Very, very true. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And you have stuff far like from, from the basics on up to advanced, or is this, are you planning to have this be strictly for those who just are at the ground level wanting to learn magic? Beginners? I'll, put it, I'll put it to you this way. If... The magic on the site scares people. I don't want to do it. And I mean by that is like I'm not going to do twisting aces or twisted aces. Uh, I'm not going to do, um, you know, some really complicated things because I want them to start out and be able to feel that they're not going to be in something where it's like, oh, this is a magician's site. And I want that to be true. But I also – I mean, but look, really – There is so much basic magic in the world. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I might do a Downs palm, but it might be, you know, it's got to be simplistic because I don't want the normal, uh, um, the feeling that your intimidation to exist. So I just want to start off the way it is, which is a catalog of these slights and these tricks that you can do. And then when you get the confidence, I would love to push them other places. No problem with that. Mm -hmm. Well, the basics are so important anyway. If we talk about what are some of the things that we want to, if possible, uh, instill in those who are aspiring to be magicians. Now, I focus on cards a lot, so I maybe can't speak for coins, but I think it still applies. And it's probably some of the best advice I was given at another forum at the Magic Cafe. So there is good there. But uh, was this person who said, focus on the fundamentals. So, for example, I think at that point it was about learning to hold just hold a deck right people you know you can monkey grip the thing and it blows you up for later so i mean really to learn what it is to, to how do you hold a hand a, a deck in mechanics strip i would highly recommend if you're new to card magic for example get the the card colored set i have them here on my shelf all five of them yeah. to learn how to do it right at the beginning is going to save you time later or even i can remember spending a lot of time just on my couch lifting the top pack uh, the top portion of the pack and then setting it back down while maintaining a little break in the back yeah. that sounds dumb Pinky break, but yeah. man you spend course on that it's it's really important that's fundamental but uh, to what you're going to learn later on and so not spending the time to set that groundwork at the beginning and a firm foundation i think it's a mistake and i'm glad that that person there had instructed me that way so it well, that's, me. yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about is is that You know, uh, in any discipline that I've had, whether it's a whip or ropes or cards or any sort of magic, is is that um, if you are not clear and don't go back to the basics, ballet um, is a good example, then what happens is that when people see you doing it, they go, well, they've got some raw talent, but they are not technically right. And look, magic is about learning technically right and being able to do technically right and not have everybody see you. And it mm-hmm. is about that fact that you need to learn the basics of magic to the point where no one notices that you just did a false cut because you've done it so many times that you, mm-hmm. uh, you know. But if you don't and you just learn a trick, then what happens is that you you get insecure. You don't, someone says, hey, well, well you want to see, the, do a tr- another trick. And, you know, we raise a bunch of button pushers, which is okay. But there's too many levels of magic from performance to technical skills that I think would be 
uh, that we have to learn. And that's, you know, I just want to broach that uh, subject and kind of go from there. But one thing I did want to tell you is, is that the other reason why I started this is because the, you'll see on the site, basicsofmagic.com, uh, Zucchini's Tricks and Things, which is actually the magic shop that I started back 38 years ago, 39 years ago, actually, uh, Brian Whitehead, who is the uh, great zucchini, and he's not that much, he's only like 10 years older than me, but I started off in that place, and I was a, I was a, I was a bum skater, all kinds of stuff, mm-hmm. I was just not a good kid. Mm-hmm. And the fact is, I came in with my Yamaha jacket and my skateboard, and I'm like, yeah, this is cool. I was a little thug. And then I got introduced to magic, and it cleaned me up. I'm not saying that to send your kids to magic camp to change them. But anyway, I talked to him recently because of what's been happening in our world with the the pandemic. And and I said, how's it going? And he said, well, I think we're going to be shutting down. I'm like, I can't have that. So I literally had the site up, Magic of, Basics of Magic, but I had it with another magician. Anyway, long story short, I basically retooled everything and, and branded it as Zucchini's Tricks and Things as the virtual magic shop because I just don't want to see another brick and mortar go down. Yeah. Well, you gain another customer. You know, I'm, I'm sure you have comparable prices and stuff like that, but I yeah. have a heart for that. I think a lot of magicians do, and if we could help zucchinis stay open by just simply moving our purchasing from one of the big ones to the one of the smaller right. ones we, I mean, they i'll all do get, that the good thing is is that they all kind of get their stuff from the same loftus or magic city or whatever they happen to get them but brian the owner had at one point bought a huge stock of a lot of these uh tricks that were popular and so now mm-hmm. it's comparable but the big thing is this is that um where i believe that it will really help um, push this brick and mortar is, is that if you get the tricks and you spend a certain amount of money, then you're going to get a, a tutorial one on one. I mean, you can't. Mm. I mean, seriously, right. unless you go to the magic shop, you can't get that if you buy the trick. So, you know, doing right. that and then saying, hey, you know, you do two card money. Maybe you want to do this after that. And, you know, whatever the case may be or a haunted deck. Anyway, the, the point is, is that you're going to get something a little bit more valuable than just, hey, you got a trick. Good luck to you. That's true. Really, can I, really good. Can I ask you really quickly, what is um, Rudy Tinoco, by the way, right? Tinoco? Yeah, you nailed it. Tinoco. Uh, what is the first trick you remember doing or seeing? Do you remember that? Yeah, the first, well, the first magician I ever saw was Cuckoo the Clown in San Jose at my cousin's birthday party. And San Jose. He, he did the bent silk <laughs> on me, and it was the first trick oh, I'd what? ever seen. And I can remember seeing something on his thumb. I, I, at that time, it looked like it was maybe a rubber band or something. So he kind of exposed the thing, or I saw it, but still... <laughs> The way that he made that thing disappear and reappear up my sleeve, he pulled that out of my sleeve, which I do now, I do the same thing, just amazed me. And the bug bit me so hard. After, I was enamored of magic from then on, and I was, must have been seven years old. Uh, and, and that's still a powerful trick. I do it all the time. I know yeah. some magicians might look down on that. I mean, it's a basic, but anybody who does that regularly for little kids, man, they are undone by that. I do it for my grandson all the time, and he loves it. I just love the fact that it was a guy named Cuckoo the Clown. <clears throat> At Cuckoo the Clown, man, he, really? he did a lot clown? of our parties. <laughs> and um, wow. yeah, so that was the first time. And then another, the, the other thing I had saw when I maybe when I was 12 or so was when I had gone to a Christmas party and they hired a magician who did, it was just a, he turned a pan, a pan that was full of dove pan. chocolate and butter and then the beans, a dove pan full of candy and tossed it out to us. And I, I was the guy, the kid who we called up there with a broken, you know, the, the breakaway wand, just uh, <laughs> firmly establishing here I am, 46 years old, still screwing around with red sponge balls. And I just love it. I love it. And it's, uh, I think those people who are tuning in here and who are just beginning to get on that journey, you will bring so much light and joy to people's hearts. That's part of it. It's fun. I, lo- I, I love this art, but I, I love the joy that it brings and the connections that you make with people through something that appears to be silly. And in some ways, I suppose it is. But there is a joy that you can bring to people through magic that I don't know that you can do through any other um, form of art. You know, it's, it's a very unique thing, very unique. And so I'm excited for folks who are 
tuning into this and who might just barely begin their journey and you get to be part of that will yeah. it's they'll you'll I'm remember I'm you as the guy who, who, who introduced them to magic and yeah and set them up so i want to know if uh, if you come across cuckoo and this other magician ever you never who know they're probably not with us anymore but uh but the bottom line is is that uh would you strangle them or say thank you <laughs> I would love to shake his hand. It, it, yeah, it was beautiful. It's, it's it added a lot of wonder to my life, which I've been able to pass on to other uh, young people. And it's kind of come full circle. I've, I've seen folks who've come to me and say, thank you. Uh, you. I've married people who I did a simple, <laughs> I did the anniversary walk for them. And then three years later, they say, hey, you did a trick for us when we were just dating. Will you marry us? Oh, that's and funny. Like, yeah, it's amazing because you know I remember coming up with a couple. I said, "This trick, oh, you're just dating? Watch what this trick is. It's just almost prophetic. It's going to bring you two together like never before. They get married, and the uh, so anyway, those kind of things. Those are that's re- where the real magic is, and we get to be a part of that. It's I would, awesome. I, I love would it. love to see you do uh, torn and restored vows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. <laughs> oh, that's you looks see like this one didn't go to back together. <laughs> this must be that's great man. Yeah. Um, yeah last thing I want to ask you is if you are going to give uh, the best I, I call it the best four letter word in the English language free advice free um, to someone starting out in magic and I'm going to talk just a teeny bit here while you think about this um, I want you to tell me what that is but while you're thinking about that I want you to know that you're looking at Rudy Tinoco Tinoco <laughs> had it there you go you, but it's magiciansforum.com and go to you can see it in the lower thirds of the screen go to this site and sign up as you get into magic i think you're going to be very happy i know that you've got a, a, you've really been doing some amazing stuff and getting people to do seminars and now that we are in a zoom world sure wish i had bought and stock bought stock in that company before it went zoom um, mm-hmm. But yeah, but in any case, now that we are in this world where we are getting delivered all this wonderful content out of necessity and out of uh, what the heck are we going to do, um, I just want to mm-hmm. say, really, been watching what you've been doing. It's just phenomenal. Um, and so the magiciansforum.com, uh, and you're doing a, a great job. But so, in answer to the question, Thanks. what's the answer? Yeah, you know. I think maybe just kind of expanding on what I was just saying with regard to bringing joy to people, that magic is about it, the people who you are engaging with. I think you see it all the time in YouTube channels. You, it's crotch shot with the cards down here, where you'll see people performing and their heads down, and they're not they're not engaged. With and it becomes very you know, almost selfish the way that some approach magic. We forget that we're there's people that we're performing for that we want to connect with, and Again, that's where the magic happens. So while I think, sure, some of the stuff we do, the silly things that we, you know, the little, all this stuff that we can do with cards, and it's fun. But a lot of that juggling and stuff, we can sometimes lose sight of the connection that we are able to make with the magic. So have fun with it. Don't forget that you're, you're trying to, you can use this as a vehicle to connect with people and bring joy to their lives, as well as bring joy to yourself in doing that. It's a win-win. Rudy, Rudy Tinoco, uh, uh, of course, magiciansforum.com. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Uh, hang on one yeah. second. I'm going to close this out. Uh, I really appreciate it, all your insight, and certainly the love that you have had for magic, and I know it will continue to go on. I'm very excited about the things that you're doing. Um, folks, look, I appreciate you watching the show. I'm Will Roberts, and uh, I'm the magician on the site. You will see. If you have any questions, you can go to the website. One thing I will close out with is, is that and I'll probably say this every single show, and that is is that um, treat magic uh, like it's something that you want to hang out with you all the time, meaning that there are rules and there are regulations and there are policies, and the important ones are obviously never tell a secret. I see a lot on TikTok. There's a really famous guy on uh, TikTok that will do a trick, and then he'll go, yeah, so here's how you do it, and I'm like, I don't, but he's got, you know, I can't knock it because if he went there to get a lot of followers he's achieved that but the problem is is that it it, it you know it, it it's just i don't know maybe it's like doing a fashion show and then stripping afterwards you're like that's not what i was hoping to see but uh you know that's a weird analogy i know but the fact is is that we do this because it's an art and it's in books between two pages 
between two covers and, and it's there for a reason and that's so you can open it up look at it and close it up again do the trick and keep it to yourself because we are in the world of creative illusions and the minute you step out of that you're just a tattletale you're just a you know someone that gives you and I don't want to say I was going to say something giver but that's not PC anymore you, you can't just do these things nowadays with magic because uh, we'll hunt you down Anyway, uh, thanks for coming on the show again, Rudy, and uh, I hope to have you on again soon. Uh, and uh, thank you, folks. Go to the site, basicsofmagic.com. We've got lots of stuff there. Plus, I've got a new section in there where you can actually virtually book a magician, where you can click it and say, look, I've got a, a Zoom meeting. We can Zoom bomb you. Or we can come in there because that's the type of thing that's happening nowadays in businesses. Plus, Johnny's birthday party. If you don't, if you need to keep social distancing, which I get, then um, I highly recommend that you get the big screen and all your 30, 20, 30, 100 friends. It's a lot easier. We can help you get a magician or an entertainer to your party, and it's a lot of fun. So check out basicsofmagic.com. It's a huge endeavor, but I'm there to win it and in it to win it. We are, and we will see you next time. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks.